Hello, and welcome to another episode of I Demand a Homestead. My name is Amanda, and today what we're going to be talking about is how to take rendered beeswax and turn it into beautiful candles. All right, these are um, six inch tapered candles. I'm going to show you how to make these as well as some little tiny um, tea lights as well. Okay, these are um, the kind of candles that we use most often around here just because they're functional um, and they're beautiful. All right, so also, if you're curious to know how to render your own beeswax from, um, from Honeycomb, please check out my video. I'll post a link to that up there in the, the top of the screen thing so that you can watch that one as well, okay? So the first thing you're obviously gonna need is some beeswax, um, whether you render that yourself or whether you um, buy it online, um, doesn't really matter. Um, try and get um, organic beeswax if you can so that that way you know it has less chemicals in it. And then you're gonna need some stuff to melt the beeswax um, and you definitely are going to want at least one pot um, and equipment that you dedicate only to beeswax, okay? Because this stuff will get all over the place and it's really hard to get out. So I have a pot that I only use for beeswax and I'm going to melt it in that pot. Um, now we are going to create a double boiler, meaning that we're going to put water in this pot and we're going to put the wax in this pot so that that way it doesn't burn. Um, this one, this is just a regular kitchen pot. You don't need to kind of dedicate that one. And then I have a few other things that I kind of use as well. I've got an old kind of measuring cup that I use to pour the wax in. And again, clearly just for beeswax. Um, I've got a spoon that I'll use to stir it. I've got a few kind of containers, glass containers that you'll see kind of why we use them. Um, and then I've got some plastic sheeting as well, just to cover the work area because wax will get everywhere. And then obviously you're going to need some wicks and some molds. Okay. So for our tea lights, I've just got some tea light molds and you can reuse these as well. Okay. So you only need to buy them once. And then I have got some kind of pre-made little tiny tea light wicks. Okay which I got from a company called Voyageur um, from BC. So um, these ones are, I haven't tried these wicks before, but they were recommended by someone. So I'm going to see how well they work. And then I have got some silicone molds for candles. So this one is um, for like a votive candle. Um, I'm not going to make any of those today, but so they're silicone. That's great because they don't stick. Okay. You can also get, um, metal molds, but these are so easy to get the candles out of because it just doesn't stick. And these are the molds for our, um, for our taper candles. Okay. And they've got a hole in the bottom for the wick to pass through. And then I've got a roll of wicking here that I would use for either the votive candles or for the taper candles. And I've actually used it to make these little tea lights too, but I haven't been really satisfied with how it burns. So we're going to try these other ones today. All right, let's get started. Okay. So I have got a uh, set up my double boiler. So I've got a heat on medium for this and I've got probably about two inches of water in that bottom pot. I have cut up my wax into pieces that'll fit more easily in the pot. And then I'm just going to kind of pop them in here. Okay. So we will put them in there and then we'll wait for all of this to start melting. Okay. So while we're waiting for our wax to melt, we can actually start kind of setting up our area here. Okay. And, um, getting our, our molds ready to kind of fill. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm just going to take my little, can you see that? I'm going to take my little, um, tea light molds and I'm just going to kind of place those wicks inside and probably what I'll actually do is when it's melted I'll take a little drop of wax and I'll put it on the bottom and I'll just kind of place them like that so that that way they'll stay and making sure that the wicks are directly upright okay that's important so I'm going to put all those little wicks in there just to make sure I've got enough the setup for this is really quick 
obviously these little tea lights don't take very long. But these are nice too in an emergency to have lots of these around because they'll give you a fair amount of light for a while. And now what we're actually going to do for these ones, as I saw before, they've got a little bit of a hole in here. So we need to get, and this is where the tapered end of the candle actually is. So we need to somehow thread this wick through there. So what I've kind of um, developed, devised, is a little bit of like, almost like a needle to thread it through. Okay, so um, what I'll actually do is I'll take the end of this wick and I will thread it through here. All right, like so. You can kind of see that it goes through like that. And then I will actually take this end, it's just a little bit of wire, and I will kind of poke, poke that through the hole and thread it all the way through to the top. And then what happens is you can pull your wick through just like so, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut off the end here and then tie a little knot in it at the bottom so that it won't come through. like that and then I'm gonna pull that snug and then the other thing we need to do is at this end you can kind of see how that wick wants to kind of lay against the side that's not what we want we want it kind of right in the middle okay because that then burns an awful lot better so what I again have devised is if I can find it oh it's underneath my feet here Hang on. I just use a little bobby pin and I put the bobby pin across nice and snug and sometimes I'll use a couple of them so that that way I know it's going to stay in place okay and I make it sure it's nice and tight there good just like that so that that way you can see that that wick is right in the center and then all I need to do is just pour the wax in there and I put it inside this little jar just to hold the whole mold up right, so that way I don't have to worry about it falling over. Okay, so we'll do the same thing to this one now. Okay, that is looking pretty good. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a stir. Just give it a little bit of a stir, just to try and get those pieces underneath the melted wax, so that way they'll melt a little faster. Okay, so our wax is perfectly melted now and we're ready to start making candles. Um, I am gonna leave this wax on the heat just because that way it will stay melted. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make one of these votives, okay? Or rather one of these um, tea lights. So I'm gonna take this little end of the wax or the uh, wick. I'm gonna dip it into our wax here and then I'm going to put it into the middle of this tea light and that will stick it down okay so now it's not going anywhere and now we're ready because the wick is straight and it's stuck down we're ready to pour wax in there i'm going to do the rest of these though just so that they're all ready okay so mac the wax is melted so now we're ready to do our tea lights okay easiest way i've found without spilling too much to do these little tea lights is just use a spoon and just fill them up Oops, just like that harder to do when you're filming yourself. All right. Wax will shrink a little bit, so it's okay to fill that all the way up to the top. And then I'm going to put it somewhere to cool for about 15 minutes. Okay, so here are our tea lights. Um, and you can kind of see the way they change in color and also the way that wax is shrinking, right? So probably what I'm going to do is um, as they're kind of um, cooling off, I'm going to fill them back up with wax just to try and get them closer up to the top. Okay, so for these ones, I'm actually going to use my measuring cup here. So I'm going to fill it up. Okay, we're going to pour it all the way up to the top. And then I'm going to reposition my bobby pin. <laughs> and then again, this is going to shrink as it's cooling off and then I'm going to fill it back up. Okay, so let's do this one too. So these are gonna take about 15 minutes to harden completely. Um, and I'll just kind of fill them up a little bit 
as they're kind of hardening and shrink, I'll be filling them up, okay? So we'll come back in 15 minutes when we're ready to take these out of the mold. Okay, so now our 15 minutes has passed and our wax has hopefully set up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take off my bobby pins here. You can also kind of tie this around a stick. You could use uh, lots of different things, whatever you have, piece of wire, whatever you can rig up, okay? So then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut this piece of thread, or this wick rather. So I'm gonna pull it a little bit taut so that I can then come in here with my scissors, just trim it off, okay? And then, now that I've done that, because obviously we wanna pull this out this way, we're gonna kind of just pull it, and you can see how easily this candle just slides right out. And it's gorgeous, right? So what I can do is I can just kind of snap off the excess at the bottom, and I'll pop that back into our wax pot. And then I'm just gonna trim, I might kind of flatten this down a little bit too. I'm gonna trim this wax or this wick right off. Pretty ridiculously easy. Okay, you can form that a little bit if you want to make it look pretty, but just a beautiful looking candle. All right, let's do the other one. Now I only have two molds, so I have to make two candles at a time because the molds are not cheap. But, you know, I just do other things while I'm doing that. Okay, so I'm gonna finish off using the rest of my wax to make more of these and then we'll come back and show you everything when it's all done. Okay, there are our completed candles. We have four of the six inch tapers and two, four, six, eight, nine of the little tea lights. So it didn't make too much, but I didn't have um, that much wax. So you can kind of imagine if you had more, how many you would get, but these are beautiful, beautiful candles and they burn really, really well. So thank you for joining me on another episode of I Demand a Homestead. If you like this video, please feel free to press the subscribe button and then the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my videos. And I hope everyone is having a wonderful day and we'll see you again soon. All right, bye-bye.